My name is Nassim Sabs. Let me ask you a question. Has anything ever happened to you that you couldn't explain? That made you feel sort of foolish when you tried to tell somebody about it? Well, if it has, you have plenty of company, as you'll soon see. UFOs and demons. I, w I want to get your overall take on this. Well, I believe that UFOs were demonic for a long time. Mm -hmm. And so a few years ago, I started to really delve into it deeply, going through you know, thousands and thousands of pages. That this whole phenomenon cannot be a material phenomenon. It has to be a spiritual phenomenon. And if we take the UFO, so-called aircraft itself, we can see that it's a fact they've been tracked at incredible speeds of tens of thousands of miles an hour. Then they instantly reverse at those speeds. Uh, they make right angle turns at those speeds. And sometimes they make sonic booms. Or they make noises sometimes when they're traveling. Other times they're completely si silent. So that contradicts the laws of science. Uh, in fact, most UFOs make no noise. Witnesses has said who have seen many UFOs that the aircraft itself seems as if it were alive. Sometimes they're picked up on radar, sometimes they're not. Sometimes they can be photographed, picked up on pho photographs that people have taken of them. Sometimes they don't appear in the photographs when people try to take a picture of them. While in flight, sometimes they change color, size, shape. And uh, so, in fact, actually every color of the spectrum just about has been reported for these uh, UFO so-called aircraft. Uh, sometimes, frequently, they instantly appear and disappear in front of people. Let, let, let me go down this road for a fleeting moment. Hauntology and ufology are the same. One experience in ufology says a being crawled out of an orb and spoke to me and my father. Dr. Barry Taft in the San Pedro haunting had an apparition crawl out of an orb. Same phenomenon. Now, same phenomenon. You literally had a being pop out of an orb in your presence. One's extraterrestrial, the other's a ghost. Now, here's what's most troubling. If they are the same entities that are providing the rules for us to follow, we have a problem because Dr. Barry Taft documented human blood plasma dripping from the cupboards in that haunting. Human blood plasma. Now let's translate that to ufology. If they're the same beings, why are they giving us rules? What are they? And so that's really my point with you guys. And next, next show, we'll go even deeper into the protocols and kind of dissect those. But I wanted to present us a foundation because I, I'm telling you that if we can understand this, that they're, they're not even following their own rules, what makes us think they're going to follow ours, that is at least a launching point to where, like Jimmy Corbell says, uh, weaponize our curiosity, to where we start asking perhaps the most important questions. Are these stepping stones to transcendence or are they stepping stones to possession and deceit? Are we being conjured by them to conjure them? Are they needing the human condition to step into our world just like they had over and over and over again to the point that even if Aleister Crowley was bastardizing Kabbalistic rites. It did not matter. They had an invitation. Right? Even if it's, if it's Santeria, I don't care if the phonetic rendering's wrong. I don't care if you mix words up and, and put one up if you were the, before the other. That's not really what I'm after. What I'm after is you knocking on my door first and allowing me to step into your world. And, and let me tell you something. I've had this in my own cases. If it is a human initiated contact, it's 10 times harder to get that entity out. I had permission to be here. I didn't knock on their door, they knocked on mine. And so what we have here is a chilling reminder that right now we're still, what we're trying to do here, believe it or not, I have these papers. 
We're trying to characterize spirits. That's what we're trying to do. It's not just an utterance or contact. This entity likes to be approached this way. When I say this, when I do this, and it's not just that, uh, Dr. Uh, Travis Taylor's out there building altars to them, saying prayers to them. I'm thankful, be thankful. Now, again, that troubles me to just to a profound degree because it's not like these beings are saying, hey, don't pray to me. <laughs> They're responding to it. So what I'm saying here essentially, guys, is I'm raising a red flag. And I know this is not my best show ever. I know that. But what I'm doing here is I'm raising a red flag of warning and caution. Because there's going to be a difference. It's going to evolve. It's, it's going to stop being, okay, I'm tired. There's a bunch of lights in the sky. And then it's going to evolve into, I want more contact. It's going to evolve into, I want to see them. And then it's going to be, okay, now, now that I have you outside of the orb, what do I have to do to gain access to you? And at a certain point, we're going to be holding hands with Crowley, Parsons, everyone in history who's tried to knock on their door in hopes that we would find mercy in their eyes. They would pity us enough to say, hey, listen, here's a little bit of information. At the end of the day, though, I'm going to take a lot more than I give because you conjured me. I'm done, Rex. I'm sorry. I know it's bad. My bad. You're not bad at all. No, this is fascinating. Please don't say that. And people in the <laughs> chat are going to say the same thing, man. This was great. And this is, I mean, a fantastic show. And I, you're on the ball. So thank you very it's much, man. Foundation. I it. It's foundation. Yeah. Um, human sacrifice. That is, I'll oh, shut up. Man, it's terrifying. Well, it's frightening. And it makes me wonder, like, what? happened right because i believe there was a time when we walked with the gods and then we stood with the gods and then we sat with the gods and then we knelt yeah. with the gods and will there be a time again when we walk with them but i don't think see some people say and believe that it was the gods that created certain rituals and sacrifices and i wonder if it was actually man and they, they were they're just like blaming the gods right they Very possible died. something happened and then the gods are like wait a second look at this we gave them these amazing uh th these amazing qualities and these amazing right inventions and opportunities and look what they're doing with it so or there could have been both right I mean, it could have been and when i'm referring to the term gods folks i'm not referring to capital g i'm not referring referring to divine providence right. the creator of the universe i'm referring to very powerful deities that are looked mm -hmm. at like creators, like you know, with magnificent powers and abilities. And I would mm -hmm. say that it's probably both. I would say there's probably both, but what I, there was most likely, I, I envisioned a time when we were made to be stewards of the earth, right? And not- Oh yeah, 100%. Not destroyers, not destroyers of worlds, but, but protectors of worlds. Absolutely. And I think that uh, one thing I try to highlight tonight, and I will the next show, because I'm getting, the next show is going to be the, the portion of this whole lecture then we're going to get to the, the first the second kind third kind and everything and uh we're going to kind of nail it nail the coffin down hopefully but one thing is most interesting is in the book of limitations the prophet moses talks about demons it's interesting how he words that he says you sacrifice your children uh to gods who were no gods so, right, to, to, to demons, or no, yeah, to demons who were no gods, gods who know were gods. This is how I phrase it, gods who were not gods. And if they're not gods, why do you refer to them as gods, right? Even more than that, the very next sentence is alarming. He said, gods that were not old or new, they recently appeared. In other words, who were these guys? They're, they just showed up. And I fear, again, that if CE5 is going to become the new prayer, then is ufology be going, is going to start up, is it, is it going to start branching out new religions with new prophets? Here's why I say that, because these beings are not stopping it. They're not going out there and saying, hey, hey, don't pray. Right? They've ne never done that. 
in, in each and every other case, you know, you give them an inch, they're going to take a mile. And we're at the very end of it thinking, I really thought you were a cool guy. <laughs> but um, yeah, man, I'm finished, brother. Thank you so much for having me, Rex. I hope I, I hope that was leak worthy. Um, I do hold you guys in high regard. Very much so. <laughs> no, it was great. And we think the same of you. Thank you very much. I hope you have a, a fantastic night and keep being the change you want to see, Nathaniel. Thank you. Love you, Elite Project. Have a good night. Much love. All right, everybody. Well, I don't know about you, but that was quite, quite the ride, quite the journey. And clearly when you hear these kind of stories and testimonies from people, it makes you question the fabric of reality itself. And there was a recent roundtable we did here at Leak Project. You need to watch this. It's available in the archives. I haven't uploaded this yet on the YouTube channel. And these videos are done every Wednesday with Shafu Ramon and Jonathan and oftentimes Buddy James and others will show up. And the discussion was about the Matrix and are we in a simulation? And is the Matrix itself a big MK Ultra scam to put people into this state of confusion and not caring as much because they think it's a simulation? So, well, the interesting thing is, if you go back and read some of the ancient Greek writings, it talks about the plethoroma or something along those lines, the, the verbiage might be off there, but a, a reality that is far beyond the reality that we see and, and view and experience. It's something that is much more. And maybe that would be the closest we could get in parallels to the possibility of being in a simulation or a matrix, but it certainly is a perception uh, it, it, it's all about perception. Some people might look at the simulation, well, well, if it's a simulation, it doesn't matter. But then others will say, well, if it's sim a simulation, let's learn as much as we can so that we can take this to the next level. It's a, it's a learning simulation. Some people believe it's a trap. Some people believe it's a reincarnation energy matrix where they're being used as these batteries. And it could be all of the above. It might be none of the above. Do we really know? I mean, how much about the other side do we really know and those that communicate with us from the other side how do you really know it's that being that's communicating with you now i will say i have certain experiences with my my grandparents that have passed to the other side and i 100 uh, percent believe it was them but that's my own personal beliefs and so what about you what do you think about the tunnel and the um, the life review and the theory of if we are in a simulation, that would explain why everything breaks down into electricity or vibration or frequency. And the DNA is dual binary code. And if you look under a microscope with physical matter, there really is no finite point. And then when we can see that finite point and it, it, it appears to be going in and out of existence like a breath. And the Big Bang itself could be like the breath of Brahma, the, the exhale, and then there will be an inhale. So there's this constant uh, flow of energy. Does, does it mean that we're in a matrix within a matrix? Does it mean we're actually in a simulation as code? Uh, or are we spiritual beings experiencing this physical reality to improve our spiritual experience and then we can perceive it as such because of the reality that we live in it appears to be so and television and movies and films are so powerful and i brought this up before how many times do you think about something how often do you think about something that clearly you're referencing in your brain like what you're about to do how often do you think about something you've seen on tv or in a movie or heard on the internet or read somewhere, but don't, aren't really taking your own personal experiences to, to parallel that to, or your own thoughts. You're taking something else that has absorbed into your thought process to use as a way to parallel if what you're doing is right or wrong. That's where things get very interesting.